In this video, we're going to walk through some of the things that our app.js brings in. So the first uh, thing we'll do is if you look at line six, it's bringing in the logger. And if we look at logger.js, um, we can see that this is pulling in some packages from Winston. So Winston is a logging application typically used with Node.js. This is just creating a basic Winston logger. And so all of our incoming and outgoing requests will be logged to the console for debugging. We'll go back to app.js. Um, all of these are the feathers packages that are being brought in. But if we look at line 14, this is bringing in middleware. And we can see it requires in dot slash middleware. And if we look at that, that is a folder. And inside of it is a file. And right now, this doesn't really export anything. So it exports a configure function, which we'll talk about. Um, but if you do want to add any of your own uh, express middlewares, you can do that here. And you have access to the app variable, so you could do app.use. Um, and this is a nice way of keeping your code nice and clean. And instead of adding all of your middlewares in this file, which could get very large and unruly, you can do it in that file instead. If we look at the next line, line 15, that's bringing in services. So let's take a look at services. So if we look at index.js, uh, we can see that it is bringing in the user service, which is defined in this folder. And then it's exporting a function. Um, you're going to notice this pattern as we go along. A lot of these things export a function. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the next video of like what is the configure function. But you can see we export a function. It gets access to app. And then we're passing in our user service into app.configure. So let's take a look at users. So if we go into the users folder, and we take a look at user service, uh, we can see that this creates the service. So first thing, it requires in um, the users class. And so this is if we want to define any custom behavior on this service. Um, however, we'll see the next line, we're bringing in the model. And this service actually uses kneedb. So the kneedb feathers package has done all of the hard work of deciding what to do when you call service.find or service.create or service.delete. It handles out all of that under the hood. But if you do over want, if you do want to override any of the functionality, you can do it in, in this file. We're bringing in hooks. I'll talk about in another video what hooks actually are. Um, and then we export, again, one of these configure functions. Um, so we create the model. So when you see app.git, uh, it's reaching into this configuration file and grabbing a particular configuration. So this is grabbing the paginate configuration. So if we look in here, we can see it's just an object. So um, it's actually passing that object in. So we have some default pagination options for any of the services that get generated. Uh, we create our options. We then add our service. So we're saying app.use slash users. So the user service is available at slash users as a RESTful endpoint. And we're creating an instance of our user service. And remember, um, our user service um, actually will extend the uh, needDB service. And we'll see that in a second. Um, we get an instance of that service we just registered and then pass in all of the hooks. So if we look back at the top, we're bringing in users.class. So let's take a look at that. Again, this is just an empty class where we can override things if we want to, but we can see that it extends service, which is brought in from Feathers needDB. So this is pretty much all we need to do to have a Feathers.js service that interacts with a needDB database. We don't have to write any custom querying logic. We can if we want to, but by default, we don't have to. So the class is defined here. It just extends the needDB service, and then that service is used here with our options and our application. Uh, the next line is bringing in the model. And so if we take a look at uh, go up two directories into the models directory, and then the users.model, we can see that this is bringing in the needDB package. And um, the first line of code, again, we're seeing this app.get. This is getting the configuration for needDB. So if we look at default.json, we can see that it's uh, defined uh, dot dot slash data. So it knows to store all of its data in data. So it's grabbing that configuration. Um, we're creating an instance of needDB. Uh, and you'll notice all of these, these lines of code here don't really have anything to do with feathers. This is just a matter of getting um, our database set up. And I mentioned it earlier, but needDB is just a flat file database. So it's going to be creating a file called users.db that ultimately just has JSON data inside of it. Um, later on, when you create services with things like SQLize or Connects or Mongoose, um, your model file will actually have the configuration to define the schema for that table or to connect to the database. Um, but in this case, we just need to set up needDB to talk to that file. Um, we're creating an index, and all of our data will be indexed by email, and then we're returning that model. So that model gets returned back in the service as this create model function, and then we create our model. And the last thing we're bringing in here are hooks. And if we take a look at users.hooks, um, we can see these are all the user service specific hooks. 
Now I'll talk about hooks in more detail in a separate video, but you can see here that we're actually bringing in some predefined hooks from Feather's authentication and Feather's local authentication. Um, the idea with hooks are that they are functions that can be called before, after, or on error of any service method call. Um, and again, we'll talk about hooks in more, more in depth. We'll talk about services more in depth. Essentially, services expose these methods. And on any given method, we can decide to run a hook. So what this is saying is before the find method is called on the user service, we want to ensure that they are authenticated with their JSON web token. Similar with git. So before a user can get uh, any other user, we need to make sure that they are authenticated. And these hooks, which are pre-written, um, handle the behavior of if you're not logged in, it returns unauthorized, et cetera. Um, and so there are a lot of different hooks and before hooks will get called before that particular service method and after hooks will get called after that particular service method. Error hooks will get called after an error has happened. Again, we'll talk about that more in depth in a separate video. So I believe that's it for the user's service. Let's back out back to the app.js. And the next up is app.hooks. So similar to how we have service level hooks in that those hooks are only going to be called for a given service. If we look at app.hooks, these are hooks that will get called for the entire application on any incoming request. Right now, now, right now there are none defined, but we could add our own in here. And those would get called on every single request, regardless of which service that happened on. Back to the app.js, we're also bringing in channels. And so if we take a look at channels, um, this is where all of our initial socket um, configuration is happening. So we can see here that uh, when a connection happens, we're joining that client to the anonymous channel. And so because this app has been configured with authentication, that also is happening with our sockets. So any socket that client that connects goes in the anonymous channel. And then once they have logged in and it's a successful login, we actually remove them from the anonymous channel and put them into the authenticated channel. So that way they're only receiving events in which they have access to. And in our application, um, they'll have access to pretty much any event once they are authenticated. So they'll know when, uh, or could know when new users are created or when new messages are created or, or updated. Um, there's some other stuff going on in here, which you can read and it's all commented out. Um, but this last line here is um, essentially any time an event occurs, we're going to let anyone on the authenticated channel know that that event happened. So a message was created, a user was created, those types of, of events, this is actually going to publish that to all of, uh, all of the users on that channel. All right, back to the app.js. And the last thing is authentication. So we can see that we're bringing in authentication right here. Um, we're bringing in a couple of things from the built-in feathers library. We're bringing in authentication service and the JWT strategy. We're bringing in the local strategy and also express OAuth. Um, we can see how all of this is used here. We create an authentication service and give it an instance of our app. We register the JSON web token strategy. So this is going to be in charge of validating and creating JSON web tokens. And then we have our local strategy, which is gonna allow us to log in with a username and password or an email and password. Um, and then we're exposing the authentication service on slash authentication. So any user that logs in is gonna hit slash authentication. And then lastly, we're configuring express OAuth. Now, right now, I don't have any OAuth providers added, um, but this is just there. So in the future, if I decide to add GitHub or Google or Facebook OAuth, um, it's gonna be ready to go. So this is what's involved in the authentication file. If we go back to the app.js, we can see that's pretty much all of the files that we're bringing in. Uh, lastly, I do also want to show you the test directory. And this is where some uh, default tests have been generated for us. So if we take a look at app.test.js, we can see that it brings in our application. Um, it gets the port from configuration. It gets the host from configuration. And then just does some basic tests. So does the app render a 404 page? Um, does it render a 404 JSON if we request it as JSON? We can take a look at the authentication test. And this just does some basic tests with logging in a, a user. And if we go into services, we can see that there are tests defined for all of the services that we have. Right now, we only have the user's service. So we can see that there is a basic test, which just makes sure that um, the user service is actually registered and ready to go. Now, all of our custom tests we can add inside of here. And later on in this video series, we will be adding some custom tests. Um, but that's it for now. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll jump into what exactly these configure functions I've been talking about are.